thank you. You don't deserve what you got. Say thank you. You don't deserve what you got. Say thank you. Say thank you. Say thank you. You don't deserve what you got. Say thank you. 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 There's somebody bigger in the room than you. Say thank you. Say thank you. There's somebody bigger than you in the room. Say thank you. Somebody bigger than you in your life. Say thank you. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody bigger than you. Say thank you. Say thank you. Somebody you actually really need. Say thank you. Say thank you. Somebody you really do need. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need you for my daily bread. I need you for my daily bread. You've been barking at the wrong tree. You've been wooing at the wrong tree. You've been wooing the wrong tree. You've been pining away at the wrong tree. You spent the night at the wrong tree. You wake up in the morning looking at the wrong tree. Look at that tree of life this morning. Say thank you. You need one of them leaves this morning. Say thank you. You need some fruit this morning. From that tree, there's healing in that fruit. There's healing, young people, old people. It's the, there's healing. It's deliverance. It's purity. It's hope. It's, come on, get some off that tree this morning. Climb that tree this morning. Get some fruit off of it this morning. That's why you lift your hands. Get some fruit off of the tree this morning. Get you an apple. Get you an orange. Get you a pear. What you need is healing in them, we, them, we, them leaves. It's healing in that fruit. It delivers in that fruit. It's something a man can't give you. Something a woman can't give you. Something your job can't give you. It's health in that fruit. Joy in that fruit, peace in that fruit, hope in that fruit, love in that fruit, friendship in that fruit, kinship in that fruit. Thank you, Jesus. Medicine in that fruit. Medicine in that fruit. Medicine in that fruit. Understanding in that fruit. Understanding in that fruit. Understanding in that fruit. Your special needs will be met in that fruit. Your special need will be met in that fruit. Your right now need will be met in that fruit. In that fruit. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. You got to open your mouth to taste it. You got to open your mouth to taste it. You can't taste it with a closed mouth. You got to open your mouth to taste it. Religion got you shaking your head, bobbling your head like a bobblehead on the front of a car. You got to open your mouth to taste this fruit. You got to open your mouth to taste this fruit. You can't agree. This ain't about your understanding. This is spiritual. This is more than something you get disagreeing. You got to open your mouth to taste this fruit. That's why you can't get it. Because you got to open your mouth to get this fruit.
ain't about your cuteness, about your intellect. You got to open your mouth and get this fruit. You've got your tongue. Out of the abundance of your heart, let your mouth speak. Say thank you. And out of the well of your soul will come a living spring of water. When you become thankful, grateful, all God done done for you, all the mess you done done, that's the best you got for God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You got to open your mouth to get this kind of fruit. Pious acting won't get you nothing from him. You got to come like a beggar to get what you want from him. I know somebody say come in faith, but the beggar came in faith. You got to come wholeheartedly. Just like an athlete running a touchdown, he don't tiptoe to the goal line. He run till he wind it. When he get there, he ain't got no more strength in him. When you come to the place that it ain't about your feelings, and you want folk to recognize that you hurting, you want people to see you hurting, you want somebody to recognize you hurt, but you got to let the Lord know that you hurting. Most folk got their reward because they want some person to know how they feel. So you don't idolize some person. But when you turn it to God, that's why God ain't going to answer you till you flip that on him. He a jealous God. He see you needed somebody else to fulfill what he had to fulfill. You need stuff to make you click your heels together. And God say, my name is Jealous. So I'm going to make sure you don't get satisfied till you learn how to turn that passion on me. So you get envious of others who got the key. When you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Your whole heart. Like you sought everything else with your whole heart. You put everything you had into it. Then you will know. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Ain't no sense in feeling bad about it now. Open your mouth and shout glory. Glory to the king of kings. We are at war. We are at war, and all you civilians going to be the first one to die. I said we are at war, and all you civilians going to be the first ones to die. All you tourists, all you tourists and your kids going to be the first ones to die because you don't think the game is real. We are at war. 
And the Lord told me to tell you, all you civilians going to be the first ones to die. Because you ain't taking it serious. And not only are you going to be the first ones to die, you're going to do what happens in every army. Cause others to have to come to your aid and die trying to save you. When you ought to be helping to save others. Because you need attention. You need to draw attention to yourself. You want to stay a baby soldier. And keep a civilian attitude in a time of war. But we, the body of Christ, is at war. We didn't cross over in 2022 like we going to Hawaii. The heavens is aligning with the earth. We are at war. Keep on laughing. Keep on playing. You're going to be the first to die. You can be seated. We at war. We are at war. We at war. We at war. And all of you who are playing, laughing, and you think it's a joke, keep on. You're going to be the first to die. You're going to be the first casualty. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says how you going to die. Somebody say, is this man pronouncing curses on people? No, you're doing them to yourself, and I'm going to read them to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to tell you exactly what the Lord said. And I'm not going to bite my tongue on this one because I know exactly what he's said what he told me to tell you. And those of you who are listening, 
First Corinthians chapter 11. He says in verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, that's the Lord's word. Whosoever shall drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, that is, sit under Holy Spirit teaching, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, that's whether you agree with it or not, because it's not about whether you agree with it. God doesn't have to need your agreements to run his kingdom or the fact that it didn't come with butter on it and honey and sugar. It wasn't sprinkled like your mama do. Take it back and put some, some brown syrup on it. Your mama put some more, some more sugar on it. it ain't, he don't have to bring it to you like that. He says, unworthily, meaning that in your heart you have decided that you're going to play. You're going to still take all the time in the world to get serious about this. Unworthily, meaning you're unworthy because you are trampling underfoot the blood of Jesus. How do you do it? You know what truth is. You know right and wrong, but you are determined. I'm going to do stuff my way. I'm going to do it. Go give me that red scarf there, that red one right there in the back, Usher. I'm going to do it anyway, unworthily. How do we do it unworthily? How do we eat unworthily? He says when you trample the blood of Jesus unworthily, that means to whom? The knows to do right and do wrong to him is sin. How we trample the blood of Jesus, when we first come to him, he, we come, we say, Lord, I'm walking over the blood of Jesus, stuff Jesus died for. So we come to the brazen labor. Can you put that up there for me? The brazen labor. We ask forgiveness. And the brazen labor. Let me get that. The brazen labor. I want to show you because we are at war. And the war is against the enemy, Satan. Against Satan. Against Satan. And those of you who are, who are listening, who think that I don't, I don't have to make a choice, I'm here to tell you, that you are walking in deception, deception, deception. Deception is what the, what the enemy is doing right now. He is deceiving the people of God, people on earth. Okay, the brazen labor. Bring that out here for me, bro. Just sit it right here. The brazen labor. I could have used it. The brazen labor. We come to the brazen labor, and we come and we bring our sin. We ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us of our sin. Believers, we are not exempt. Thank you, God. We are not exempt. We come. We are not exempt. We come to the door. We say, forgive me of my sin. We have to do it on a daily basis. We have to do it on a daily basis. When we decide, listen, y'all, it don't matter whether you've been to church a long time. When we decide that we are not going to come through the door and ask forgiveness of a sin, but we're going to try to come around and we're going to get in God's presence anyway, we have just walked over the blood of Jesus and we've tried to enter into God's presence and God doesn't take that lightly. This is not my doctrine. This is Bible doctrine. And this is why I'm getting ready to read. Many of you are sick. Many of you are weak. And many of you will die. It's right here. He gives us a formula. Why there's so much sickness, so much weakness, and so much death. Let me read it. Wherefore, verse 27, 
whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Let me stop right here. You can read the problem is. Here's what he's saying, y'all. I ain't making this up. He said, you came, and instead of repenting of some sin, you went all the way around here, and you got the table of showbread, and you start eating it. You start eating holy things without cleansing yourself first. And tried to come into the holy place. I guess I ought to turn it this way. You started eating holy things without washing, without letting the word illuminate, and try to get in my presence. He says, I got to kill you, just like I had to kill a priest. Now, the thing is, we don't die physically right away. Just like Adam didn't die physically right away. But we start the process because separation from God starts creating a life of sin. He's merciful to let a lot of us live a long time so we can turn around and repent. Everybody live long ain't because they're good. It's because God is good hoping that they will drop on their knee and repent and don't go to hell. Some people, yeah, but a lot of good people die young. But what he's saying, believers, he was talking to Corinthians, all of us, when we sin and we know this is wrong, God don't like this, he don't want me to do it, but guess what? But I go to church on Sunday. God is saying, I can show you in the word. What you are saying is that the table of the Lord is contemptible. 